So the pharmaceutical industry has been desperate to produce a drug to treat a disease that affects at least 70% of overweight adults. But many people have never even heard of it. But in March 2024, they finally got their first drug approved. Game changer, right? Well, not quite. Because this drug only treats a small percentage of those people, and that's only when the disease has significantly progressed. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which can progress to severe scarring of the liver. And that's what this new drug treats. And it will hopefully prevent people needing liver transplants, and that is clearly a good thing. But what it doesn't do is help everyone else with this condition, and that's a lot of people. And actually, if you have this, you do need to address it because it is a major warning sign that something is wrong. Except it doesn't cause any symptoms. So how would you know you even have it? So in today's video, I'm gonna take you through all of this. And actually, it's not all doom and gloom because while the pharmaceutical industry has spent billions trying to sort this out, actually, the solution is completely free and very easy. But first, I need to tell you why it is even a problem in the first place and what causes it because it's actually not what most people think. And so yeah, while lots of people have never heard of this condition, you might have been told that you do have fatty liver disease. You see, as doctors, we do actually pick it up from time to time, often quite by accident. So maybe you had an ultrasound scan for something else, gallstones, abdominal pain, and there it was on the report, fatty liver disease. Maybe you had some slightly abnormal liver blood tests and your doctor wasn't sure why. So they sent you for a scan, and that is what they found. They probably asked you how much alcohol you consumed, but the chances are you got told something like, ah, oh, you've just got a bit of fatty liver disease, maybe just lose a bit of weight. Or they just shrugged it off entirely. No plan to fix it, no explanation of what it means, no follow-up to check if it even got better. Or they didn't even tell you at all. You just noticed that it appeared on your medical records. And I know that sounds crazy, but it happens. And Here's why. You know, it's just so common. It's just sort of one of those things. But it's absolutely not just one of those things. And it really does need addressing. And this is my cynical side talking. But let me ask you this. Do you think we'd ever bother checking your cholesterol if there weren't statins available to be prescribed? My guess is probably we wouldn't be checking near anywhere near as much as we do. And yeah, that's how it works, isn't it, you see? If there were a drug that treated fatty liver disease, there'd be a lot of money there, and you bet that we'd start looking for it. But at the moment, it just gets dismissed as just one of those things that happens when you're overweight. And unfortunately, and all too often, the medical system only really cares about a thing when there's a pill to be prescribed. And look, this is coming from a practicing medical doctor. Okay, so why should you care about this? It's just fat in the liver, right? Well, there's two reasons, and whilst the first is pretty shocking, it's actually the second one that I think is more important. So, the first is progression within the liver itself. You see, this isn't static. Fatty liver gets worse. First, you get simple fat accumulation, and I'll tell you shortly what causes that. And that sounds kind of harmless enough, right? But in some people, that progresses to inflammation. Your liver gets angry about the fat being stored in it, and it causes a kind of hepatitis. Not like viral hepatitis, the itis bit just means inflammation. So you've got hep, the liver, itis, inflammation. And actually, remember I said that sometimes we pick up these slightly abnormal blood tests. Well, this is what's going on at that point. It's the impact of the inflammation that we're measuring. And you might know that the liver is pretty good at healing itself from all this damage. But sometimes that healing can actually cause scarring and we call it fibrosis. Then if that scarring becomes extensive enough, you've got cirrhosis. And that's when your liver starts to fail. And only treatment at this point is a transplant. And yeah, most people think that cirrhosis is something that alcoholics get, and it is. But actually, there are more transplants due to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease than due to alcohol these days, by quite some margin. And as I mentioned in the intro, it's these later stages of progression that we now have this drug treatment for. But here's reason two, and this is the one we'll applies to far more people. See, fatty liver disease is a warning sign that you're heading towards type two diabetes. It might be the only warning sign you get. And actually, they recently renamed this disease. Yes, it used to be called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Made sense, right? Fat in your liver, but you're not a drinker. But now it's called 
metabolic associated fatty liver disease. And that rename tells you everything. You see, it's not just a liver problem. It's actually part of a metabolic disease. Your liver's showing you that something bigger is wrong. It is the canary in the coal mine, or at least it should be. So before I tell you what causes fatty liver disease, I need to tell you why it's even a problem. You see, we're talking about fat within one of your major organs. It's not the same as fat under your skin, which is actually relatively harmless. The problem is that when fat accumulates in the liver, it starts a cascade of problems that affects the whole body. And what it comes down to is this. When your liver gets filled with fat, it stops responding properly to insulin. Now, insulin is a hormone that is produced by our pancreas in the hours after a meal when it senses raised blood glucose levels. It's the signal to our bodies to take up all that glucose. Our muscle cells can use it for energy. Our fat cells can take up that glucose and store it as fat for later on. All good, right? But insulin also acts on our livers, where it tells our livers to stop making glucose. So why would our livers be making glucose? Well, they make it to stop our blood glucose levels from dropping when we haven't eaten in a while or overnight. All very normal, all very necessary. But when there's plenty of glucose in the blood, such as immediately after a meal, and insulin levels are high, well, we don't need any more glucose at that point. So insulin's a signal to your liver to say, stop making more glucose, we've got plenty in the blood. And this is where it gets interesting. Because when there's fat in the liver, that's where things start to go wrong. Very, very wrong. You see that fat interferes how the liver responds to insulin and it stops that message from getting through. Your liver has become insulin resistant. So your liver just keeps pumping out glucose even when you've got plenty in your bloodstream, which basically means that your pancreas has to work even harder and produce more insulin in order to bring those glucose levels down. So what started with a bit of extra fat led to higher blood glucose levels, and then all of a sudden you've got far more insulin swimming around your body than you should have. But so what? So your pancreas has to work a bit harder so you have to produce a bit more insulin. Why is that even a problem? Well, your pancreas is basically shouting to make itself heard. And eventually, the body just stops listening. Your fat cells stop listening to that insulin signal to take up the glucose from your bloodstream. Your muscles do the same. Stop listening to insulin so they don't take it up for energy. And your whole body basically becomes resistant to insulin. And all the pancreas can do is just keep shouting louder and louder and louder to keep your blood glucose in check. So hopefully, now you can see that what started out as a problem of too much fat in the liver actually means you've developed a whole body problem. Now your whole body is struggling to handle glucose properly. This is why one prominent diabetes scientist said, before the onset of type two diabetes, there is a long, silent scream from the liver because this is happening years before your blood sugar ever gets high enough for a diabetes diagnosis. By the time you get diagnosed with type two diabetes, you've probably had fatty liver and spreading insulin resistance for years. So now you can see why it's been renamed metabolic associated fatty liver disease. You see, we shouldn't just be shrugging this off as just one of those things that happens when you gained a little bit of weight. This, is central to the development of type two diabetes. So what is actually causing all this and why has it become so common? And the big misunderstanding here is that it's simply to do with being overweight or obese. That fat is built up in your liver the same way it's built up underneath your skin. Whereas actually the real cause is consuming too much fructose. Yes, fructose. That's the fruit sugar, right? How can the fruit sugar be bad? Well, here's what you need to understand. When you eat fructose, it basically goes straight to your liver and gets turned into fat. Unlike glucose, the blood sugar, your whole body can use that for energy. Fructose has to be processed by your liver and your liver basically just turns it into fat. Then that fat gets shipped out of your body taken around your body and stored. And that in itself is a normal process. It's exactly what our bodies are supposed to do with excess energy, store it for later. 
but there is a limit because our livers can only export fat out of them at a certain rate. So if you put too much fructose in, the liver makes so much fat that it gets overwhelmed. It just can't export that fat quickly enough and it builds up within your liver. And that really simply is how fatty liver develops. But where does all this fructose come from that means our livers get overwhelmed? Well, we're not really talking about fruit here. Fruit has actually pretty low levels of fructose, far less than ever would cause a problem unless you're eating an abnormally large amount. The problem is added sugars. And we're talking things like table sugar, which technically is sucrose. But sucrose is 50% glucose and 50% fructose. And we're also talking about these chemical nasties like high fructose corn syrup. That's 55% fructose or even higher. And our big food industries have been adding more and more of this stuff into our diets for years now. And it's really not even obvious where this stuff is. It's obvious that it's in fizzy drinks and sweets and candy and whatever you want to call it. But it's also in bread. It's also in low-fat yogurts that are marketed as healthy. It's in breakfast cereals. It's in salad dressings. It's in supposedly savoury foods. And this isn't accidental, this is by design. So the food industry has been engineering these foods to be hyper palatable. Fructose basically is central to that engineering. Now 30 or 40 years ago, we only ever used to see fatty liver disease in alcoholics, because actually alcohol is pr processed in a similar way in the liver. Now we're seeing fatty liver disease in kids. And the pharmaceutical industry knows this, and they really want to fix it, and they've been trying to find medications for years now. They've spent billions, billions, trying to solve a problem that most people don't even know about. But the solution isn't even a drug. Solution's ridiculously simple. Stop eating the thing that causes it in the first place. You probably worked it out already. You start by stopping eating fructose, okay? And I know that almost sounds too simple, but... That's basically what is happening here. You just stop your liver producing that fat. And then your liver actually will be able to export the fat out that it's got stored within it. And as long as you've not progressed to a stage where you've developed the scarring, then it's completely reversible. I see it happen in my clients all the time. How long does it take? Well, the studies showing significant improvement in liver fat levels in as little as eight days. You just need to stop eating the processed foods that are loaded with added sugars and high fructose corn syrup. And it's not even fruit that's the problem here, really. Because what I didn't tell you earlier, in order to simplify things, is that actually, when you eat fruit, before it gets to your liver, it has to go through your small intestine, right? And your small intestine is actually able to process a small amount of fructose itself and turns that directly into glucose. But with fruit, it's only small amounts. Unless, of course, you're drinking fruit juice or smoothies and then you know that's very similar to the fruit uh, the um, sugar content in uh, soda but if you're someone who's watched one of my videos before you might be thinking Dan you're a low carb guy right are you telling me I can now eat fruit well it's true I am a low carb guy and here's the really really important point because yes in scientific studies eight days to see reductions in liver fat when you stop eating fructose but what about the problems that that has caused elsewhere? Because as we learned earlier, it starts in the liver, but it's spread to the whole body. And if your whole body has become insulin resistant, then you're gonna have a problem with glucose too, because your ability to process it has been damaged and continuing to consume it is just gonna make your pancreas have to work even harder. And the key is understanding whether you're insulin resistant or not. And it's not that easy. Look, sure, if you've got fatty liver disease, it's pretty diagnostic of being insulin resistant. But how would you know? I've already said you wouldn't have any symptoms of it. It's not like you get liver pain or anything. And we often only pick it up accidentally on scans when we're looking for something else. Blood tests will only show up fatty liver disease if you've got inflammation going on there, but not everyone does. So yeah, it is tricky. And it's not easy for doctors to go and diagnose it. But that doesn't help you, does it? Sitting there watching this video. And the truth is that no one is really gonna give you the answers here. You've gotta go hunting for clues. 
And sure, some of those clues are really obvious. If you've got type 2 diabetes, then you know already you've got insulin resistance. But everyone else, you're going to have to think like a detective and go looking for all the other clues that there is something going on. And you have to start by being suspicious. And the first major clue is weight. I've already said that if you're overweight, there's a 70% chance. That rises to 75% if you're obese, and that's based on BMI. But many experts in the field think that these are actually underestimates and that anyone with a significant belly, even if you're a normal weight, probably has fatty liver disease. And I'd agree. The rest of the clues, well, there's quite a lot of them. And I've put together a guide which you can download from my website by clicking the link in the description. It's completely free. It'll only take you about five or 10 minutes and then you're gonna have a much better idea of whether this is something that you need to be looking into. You see, you don't wanna be waiting for this to develop into type two diabetes before you do anything about it. It's much harder to get on top of at that point. But actually you do need to figure this out for yourself because while the pharmaceutical industry has started to make inroads into severe cases of fibrosis that will hopefully stop people needing liver transplants, they actually haven't managed to make much of an inroad into the issue that is affecting most overweight people. So for now, you're going to have to take matters into your own hands. And even if they did have a drug for it, would you really want to take it? Because actually, the solution is pretty straightforward. Just don't dismiss fatty liver as one of those things. And talking of one of those things that is frequently just dismissed, do you know that skin tags are one of the signs of insulin resistant that are so often just dismissed as just one of those things? If you want to learn more about that, make sure you watch the video that is linked on screen now. Thank you for watching. Hopefully I will see you in the next one. Oh, and the uh, link to the insulin resistance guide is also on screen now. Right, I'm done. I'm going to go now. Have a great day. See you in the next one.